discussing the capsular anatomy of the shoulder. So if you see the benoid, it's usually a pear-shaped structure with the inferior side more broader than the superior side. And if you make a circle on the inferior side, you will be able to make a full complete circle, the center of which is called as a bare spot. The center of the this inferior circle is called as a bare spot. So the superior part is narrower than the inferior part. In cases of chronic dislocations or subluxation, you will have wear and tear in this part and you may have an inverted pear shaped appearance in which the superior part is broader than the inferior part. This bare area of glenoid is usually readily identifiable on the arthroscopic examination. Now, as far as the layers are concerned, the innermost layer is the labrum. And the labrum covers the glenoid from superior to anterior to inferior to posterior at 360 degrees. So, labrum covers the glenoid 360 degrees. This is the innermost layer of the joint. At the superior aspect, the, uh, the labrum is continuous with the biceps. So, that is why biceps anchor with this region is called as a slab. So the superior labrum anterior to posterior. So the labrum anterior and labrum posterior which is continuous with the biceps. So the biceps is continuous with the slab lesion here. After that there is a posterior labrum and this is here it is the anterior labrum. Usually the posterior labrum is little smaller in size as compared to the anterior labrum which is more robust. So this is about the innermost layer of the glenoid. The second layer as we were discussing is a capsular layer. Now capsule is covering whole of the joint between the glenoid and the numeral head and it has got reflections or folds which are prominent. The most common and readily identifiable fold is a MGHL and if you see in the front there is a, this is the supraspinal tendon and the MGHL, that is the middle glenomerular ligament, transect the subscapular tendon at about 60 degrees of angle. So it crosses the subscapular tendon. So this, the, the fold of capsule which crosses or which transects the upper border of the subscapularis is called as a middle glenohumeral ligament. Up, superior to that, you have a superior glenohumeral ligament and then you have a coracoid here so there is a ligament which goes from coracoid to humerus and both these ligaments the coracohumeral ligament and the superior glenohumeral ligament they will collectively form the from the medial sling of the biceps they will form the medial sling of the biceps so both of these will attach with the superior most layer of the subscapular. So it will, they will be actually attaching somewhere around here on the subscap. And they form the medial sling of the biceps. They have got two main functions. They are the medial stabilizers of the biceps. So when the medial sling of biceps is gone, you will have a phenomenon which is called as a biceps subluxation. So biceps will subluxate medially if the middle sling of the biceps is gone and this will be a painful phenomenon. The other thing is they will be as I told you is associated with the uppermost insertion of the subscapular tendon. So whenever there is a subscapular tendon, the middle sling of the biceps will also fall down. And when they will fall down, they will cause a phenomenon which is called as a coma sign. So coma sign is a telltale sign of subscapular tendon tears. And it is seen, it's a very very important arthroscopic finding because when the subscapularis is torn, you will be not be able to see the subscap. You will identify the comma sign, you will hold this tissue and when you lift it up, you will be able to see the subscapularis tendon. So comma sign is because of the... Comma sign is basically the SGHL, uh, SGHL and CHL complex, the middle sling of the biceps, which is attached with the subscap. So it is like this. Okay. And when the subscap is retracted like this, this tissue will fall like this. And you will not be able to see the subscap, but when you pull, pull, pull this tissue with the grasper up here, you will be able to identify the subscapularis tendon. 
So this is very important as far as the subscapularis tendon pairs are concerned. These again are capsular reflections or capsular folds. They are readily identifiable. They are they are identifiable, but with difficulty. They are very thin, flimsy structures, and they form the medial support for the bicep tendon. Because bicep tendon will go into the bicep groove like this, and they will form the medial sleeve. So when this this is torn, the biceps will subluxate medially. And bicep subluxation medially will be painful. So bicep tendinitis starting to bicep subluxation and then biceps may completely dislocate. So subscapularis tendon pathologies are more commonly associated, or I would even say is almost always associated with bicep tendon pathology. So whenever you are dealing with subscapularis tendon pathology, you should ideally deal with the bicep tendon pathology as well. So this is very very important concept for the superior part, and this is all. This is all capsule is there, and these are capsular reflections. Now inferior most you have the IGHL, the inferior glomerular ligament. It has got two portions, anterior and posterior, and it forms a hammock. This is called as a hammock. This is very important structure for the stability. So in cases of glenohumeral instability, in cases of dislocations, you will have IGHL complex which is ruptured. So this, because this anterior and posterior both IGHL will form a hammock. This is basically the most important structure that you want to tension in cases of your anterior instability or shoulder dislocations. Occasionally, you need to strengthen the posterior IGHL by putting a seven o'clock anchor as well. So normally, what we do is we put three o'clock anchor, four o'clock anchor, five o'clock anchor. But occasionally, as you, if you want to tighten the IGHL on the posterior side, you can put a posterior anchor also to tighten the hammock. So it will tighten the shoulder like this. So and whenever you are tensioning or you are tightening your instability the cases, you need to do superior to inferior to superior shape. So you want to repair it in this fashion so that it becomes tight, tense, and the shoulder is now. In cases of labral tears, elbow lesions, this capsule will be separated with the labrum. So like this. IGHL, MGHL complex, this all will be separated like a lesion like this. So this lesion is separated like this, and you need to elevate it from the medial aspect. It is usually usually it is torn and it is attached on the medial part of the neck. You have to elevate it from there and reattach it more anteriorly over the face of the glenoid. So ideally, the repair of the glenoid is on the face and not on the neck. So this is very important concept. What is Buford complex? This is another very important thing you must know. What is Buford complex? It is a normal, normal finding in which you have a thickened MGHL and you have a like this MGHL is thickened and there will be no labrum here. So normally the labrum is 360 degree. In this area, the labrum is absent. So you you will see that it is like a tear but it is not a tear it is a normal anatomy it's a normal anatomy it's a normal anatomical variant it's not a tear so buford complex sublabral foramen are normal anatomical variations they are not tear and you should not repair them if you repair them the shoulder will become tight so sublabral foramen and buford complex are normal anatomical variations i have talked about the elbow lesion which is on the which is the uh, capsulo labral tear And which is attached on the medial aspect of the neck. Then you have Hagel lesions. Hagel lesions is this capsular complex. If it is detached from the humerus, it is called as a Hagel lesion. And if this posterior one is detached, it is called as a reverse Hagel lesions. They are rare. About they form about two to three percentage of your total lesions. So Hagel lesions, reverse Hagel lesions. Then you have a defect here on the posterior superior aspect of the humerus. This is called as a heel sex lesion. What is the reverse heel sex lesion? A depression in the humerus if it is dislocated posteriorly. Very good. So that is where is it? Uh, it is at the uh, just at the site of anatomical neck of humerus. And uh, it is usually on the anterior superior aspect. Anterior superior. This is on the posterior superior. This is on the anterior superior. And this is anterior to your uh, subscap tendon. Okay. So this is called as a reverse. Hill sex, and if you have a reverse hill sex, it is commonly seen in the posterior dislocation of shoulder. You need to do a procedure which is called as a McLaughlin procedure, and in which you do an osteotomy of the LT and medialize and cover this. 
reverse excitation. So that is called as a river uh, microglial procedure in which the, you need to cover the reverse cell sac lesion, otherwise if the shoulder will keep on displaying. So these are the important lesions. One lesion which we have missed is called as a glad lesion. What is a glad lesion? So the face, uh, so that is called as a glenoid labral articular defect. So on the face of the glenoid, along with the labral tear, you have an articular cartilage loss. Also. So cartilage loss along with the Labral loss is called as a glad lesion. Okay, anything else? So coming to the anatomy, first layer was capsule. First layer is my, labral. Question, my question was, how can we see these muscular structures uh, from within the joint? So there is a thin layer of capsule which is covering them. So the subscap, it is covered by a small, labor, a small layer of capsule and which is condensed to form these ligaments. So at the sites where muscles is, muscle is not there, these, this capsule is condensed huh. and at the side where muscles are there, huh. this capsule is thin. So we can... Capsule is there. Now if the capsule is not there, then what is the... Uh, if you go inside and you see the muscle directly yes. without capsule, yes. what is the, what is the uh, pathology? Hegel. Yes. Humeral avulsion of glenohumeral ligament. So this all uh, is avulsed from the humeral side. So you will be able to see muscle directly, the capsule will be falling here. That is basically a hackle lesion. So what actually we see from within the joint is a thin layer of capsule, capsule that is surrounding the and you, are, you will see the muscular reflections. If you are not able to see the capsule, you are able to see the muscle directly, you are able to see the muscle fibers directly, then it is a hackle lesion. And then you need to do the hackle repair on the numeral head. You don't have to put anchors here, you have to put anchors on the numeral head. Okay, yes. thank you. Thank you.